When the concept of the Blue Zones project came up at a city council, I was overly excited along with my fellow council members and we all gave it our full support. And to tell us about one of the most successful programs in the state and the country is Shannon Bass. So Shannon, welcome today. Thank you. All right, thank you for being with us. So Shannon, tell, tell, tell us a little bit about who you are and how you got involved in the Blue Zones. Well, right now I am a student at University of Northern mm -hmm. Iowa. I'm finishing out my degree in health promotion. Mm -hmm. So health and wellness has been really important to me. Um, and so through connections with my major and my advisor, I was um, aware of an internship with Blue Zones. Okay. I've always admired the effort, so I jumped on the opportunity. And so I started as a volunteer intern and have worked my way to a paid internship. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I sit right now. I work with teaming up with community members, um, businesses, um, grocery stores. Right. And we, we collaborate to bring healthy events to the community members in Orlando. And you know what's great about um, this program is that it touches every section of the community. I remember being in church one time and um, uh, Sherman, who used to be the PR person, was at the church telling people about how they can get involved or being at a school and you got these young people here that are running around and doing Blue Zone stuff. So no matter where you go from, wherever, it had an impact over the overall community. And two parts of the Blue Zone, um, one was the Complete Streets and one was the healthy vending. Can you tell us a little bit about Complete Streets? Yes, um, when we tried to get certified, we had to, as a community, meet certain criteria. And so one of the um, areas was city policy. So with the Cedar Valley, or with the Blue Zones project, there is a menu of choices so that businesses and community members business leaders can choose what fits right for them. Right. So the City of Waterloo decided to um, work on the Complete Streets policy and healthy vending. So the Complete Streets focuses on making um, transportation safe and available mm -hmm. regardless of whether you're driving a car or biking um, to promote safety but also to promote wellness. Mm -hmm. um, with the healthy vending um, all the city buildings are, um, have a policy set that at least 50% of what's in the vending machines is to be healthy. So if there's eight spaces for um, food or drink, four of those need to be healthy choices. Yeah, and you know, it was funny, we just um, spoke with our great um, executive director of this program, and he said he gets an opportunity to eat almonds, or what was it, almonds or nuts, but in a snicker. So we're going to have to work <laughs> on him, right? Yes. <laughs> but, um, uh, you know, and it's important because you know, traditionally, you never really think about when you go to like a vending machine and you look up there whether or not there are healthy choices um, that people can have as well. So um, that's important. And it also going back to the complete streets portion of it, um, you know, if I t when I take a look at the way Highway 63 is now, uh, before it was limited access, the trails weren't there. But this could kind of be a model of a complete streets because now you can bike, you can walk, it's even more safe um, than it was before. So it's really transforming the way that we look at our community and the way that we uh, believe that we need to have safer streets. So that, that's, that's great as well. But what does it mean and what does it benefit a city to hold that title? To hold the title of Blue Zones Project, just we, we are trendsetters for wellness, for community wellness. So we actually um, were, were one of the first demonstration cities to be chosen. And so we actually have um, other cities. The program has expanded to other states, um, Hawaii, Florida, Oklahoma. And so we have them in other cities in Iowa coming to us asking for advice on how, you know, what has worked, what hasn't worked. Um, just and then we've had um, people, visitors from as far as the Netherlands, coming oh, wow. to research the impact that Blue Zones Project has had on the, our community. And you know what's interesting? This past January, um, I had a chance to go to the United States Conference of Mayor in uh, Washington D.C. and the city of Waterloo, because Blue Zones was at the core. 
um, put together this healthy H2L ALU um, program, and we actually won a national award and support for our initiatives with the Blue Zone and our partnerships with Wheaton and the university as well. So that's pretty special. But becoming a Blue Zone city or having that designation, it's not just like something that you can go out on a day or so and get that done. There's actually a process, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it was a long road and it was really exciting. Um, in 2001, there was a statewide competition to become a um, demonstration city. So community members came together and reached out to our leaders in uh, schools, in businesses, the city leaders, and tried to get everyone on board, and there was a resounding yes. Right. Yes, we want and need this for our community. Um, and so after that, we th went through the criteria that we had to meet, and in 2012, we became a certified Blue Zones community. Right. And there's like names you'll hear involved in the Blue Zones project, but one of them is a walking Moai. Is that how you pronounce it? Yep. Um, can you tell us what that is? Yes, the walking Moai is a term um, from Okinawa, Japan. It means um, basically means coming together for support. Mm -hmm. um, so it was originally a way for villagers to come and get support from their community. And so what it is is um, a small group of people that come together for a common interest. Mm -hmm. So we really promoted with the Blue Zones the walking moais because we can get people together walking and talking. Um, the movement portion is very important, but so is the socialization. So we've moved beyond walking moais throughout our process. We mm -hmm. have kayaking moais and right. snowshoeing moais. <laughs> Cycling moais are really big too. Right. Um, and then we could al we also have um, the occasional healthy potluck moai. All right. And we have something like a Moai, maybe not exactly, that's occurring on May 12th. Yes. Um, you want to tell us about that? Yes, on May 12th, we're doing the Walk Waterloo. It's a community-wide uh, event. We're going to do a walk run, about a one mile. We're going to start at Lincoln Park mm -hmm. and end at Lincoln Park. So we're going to do a loop. It's open to all community members. And it's a celebration of um, well-being in Waterloo. It marks the five-year anniversary from when we started our journey to the Blue Zones Project. Mm -hmm. And so we've worked with the Cedar Valley Sports Flex and the Mayor Hart, who has been an awesome supporter since the beginning. Mm -hmm. And we are so grateful to have um, such leadership that is supportive of the Blue Zones mm -hmm. Project and really has been enabled us to sustain mm -hmm. and grow the program in our city. Thank you so much. And, and, and to add to your point uh, about the uh, May 12th, and you know, it's the five year anniversary as well. But it also gives us an opportunity to take a healthy approach to seeing all the progress that's being made um, downtown as well. We get to walk past this landmark or see where this improvement is, but it's a, a healthy way to celebrate who we are as a healthier community, but also one that's able to uh, show progress in areas as well. And we'll end right back there for the first Friday Lou yes. of the year as well. So plenty to celebrate, so thank you so much uh, for being here with us, Shannon. And thanks to all the staff and volunteers at Blue Zones who are working to help transform the way our community members live, eat, work, play, and go to school, all leading to a healthier and happier and more productive life.